We just wrapped up our afternoon, mid-afternoon session with Donald Miller and Seth Godin. And if you've been hanging around anything we've been doing at Entree Leadership for a while, you know that we love Donald Miller. This is his new book. There it is, Building a Story Brand. And Donald, you did a, a great talk for us. And you don't have time to unpack all of it. But one of the things you have done so generously, I believe, but I think it's absolutely a wonderful analogy as you explain to people how to build a story brand. Right. This idea of you as the company, your brand is not the hero, you're the guide. And you have said that Dave Ramsey and Ramsey Solutions has done that very, very yes. well. How is that? Well, first I want to say it's, it's been intuitive that if you naturally think in narrative, it's a little easier for you. And if you look at how Ramsey Solutions, uh, and I actually asked you to ask me this question, just that to be honest, because I didn't want, I don't want these guys behind the scenes right there, self-serving. But uh, there are several things that Dave is doing that invites a customer into a story. One of the first things is he doesn't actually tell his story or uh, present his story or play the hero in the story, which is a no-no. There's so many people out there who, who really want to help you tell your story, and I'm saying don't do it. Uh, you want to invite people into a story rather than tell them a story because what people are trying to do is survive and live a great story and they're looking for somebody to invite them into a story to live. So Dave invites people into a story. He invites people into a story about having financial freedom and not being enslaved to credit card debt and all that kind of stuff. So that's the first paradigm shift. Invite people into a story rather than tell your story. Telling your story is a great way to go bankrupt. Inviting people into a story is a great way to grow your company. You guys do it intuitively, Dave does it intuitively. Second, the, what that story is about needs to be crystal clear. So the story is about you getting into debt. If the story is about you being fulfilled or something, that feels a little bit of vague, and so you're gonna lose percentages of the audience the more vague you are. The more defined you are, the more people are going to engage, especially if they can imagine it as a climactic scene. So imagine a movie about somebody trying to pay off debt and there's this climactic scene where they pay off the debt and then they go on Ramsey's show and they do a debt-free scream. What he's doing is he's taking an, an obligatory or climactic scene, is what would it be called in screenplay terms, he's taking it and he's duplicating it on the air every day. So if anybody hears that debt-free scream and they're, they've got debt, they're seeing the end of a story that they can actually live themselves. So what does that mean for us business leaders? It means when you have a client that experiences success, put it on your Instagram. Every day, every time you have a client that experiences success, come up with some way to formalize that success and put it on your Instagram. And then every day what you're doing is you're inviting people to experience that themselves, but the only way they can do it is to go through your process. So it's cheap, it's free, it's a great way to do it. Dave didn't know he was doing this. He just wanted to celebrate and right. shine the spotlight on some people. He was accidentally creating a climactic scene in their lives. Uh, Another thing is you got to point out what negative thing is going to happen if you don't do this. Well, it's pretty clear. If you're uh, in credit card debt, you're not going to have freedom. Other companies are going to own your time and your, your life in some right. ways. There's a consequence for not doing this, and there's a reward for doing it. So all of those, are, that's about three of the narrative aspects of a story that he is inviting customers to live and then displaying and it's, it's worked fantastic, and there's a reason it's worked fantastic. That's right. Ramsey Solutions does it. Apple Computers does it. That's right. Home Depot does it. Coca-Cola does it. There's just not, I've never found one, an extremely successful brand that doesn't do this. There are a lot of successful brands who've stopped doing it, United Airlines, Comcast, and yep. you see them begin to decline, and they figure it out, and they start to clarify that, and they go back up. But everything, every customer is looking to be invited into a story, and the more we can make the elements of that story clear in our communication, the more people will engage. Yeah, one of the things you discuss in the book and you shared again today is as we begin to take on the mindset of the guide, yes. we're trying to help that customer solve a problem, right. meet their need. The way you break this down in the book and all the workshops you do is an internal need and an external right. need. I just want you to set that up because I think that's a mind-blowing concept when people get it and they go, oh, so how's Dave meeting that internal? That's so right. let's use Dave as an example. Yeah. The listener on the radio show, the caller, give us an example of that internal and external. Well, what's happening is companies tend to sell solutions to external problems, but human beings buy solutions to internal problems. In other words, nobody's really interested in your product. They're interested in what your product can get them. 
That's right. And so when you clearly communicate, my product can get you a resolution to this external problem, and let's add value. Let's add value. A resolution to the frustration the external problem is causing, and let's add value. A fight, and a piece of ammunition, and a philosophical war where it's wrong for people to have to struggle with this. But now we got three levels of problems. We've only been ex talking about one of them. That's one third the value that you actually offer. You're not talking about the other two. And over 2,000 years, storytellers have figured out external, internal, and philosophical. In other words, what Dave is actually offering is to get out of debt, a plan to get out of debt. But his, his mantra, the name of his product is Financial Peace University. What's he offering in the name of the product? A resolution to the internal problem. And he's smart enough to know intuitively that the internal problem is what people are really trying to resolve. And so just consider that a value add. You're already resolving an external problem. If you add language that says, you know, you don't have to deal with this problem and experience this pain, and it's wrong for you to ever have to do that, those, that three levels of problem, we call them stakes, those three levels of stakes, when you offer to resolve that with a buy now button, you, you, you do two things. You dramatically increase the size of the story loop in your customer's brain, and that makes them want to close it by buying your product. And also, when they do buy your product and close those three levels of story loops, they experience a greater satisfaction with the purchasing of your product, attribute greater value to you as a, as a brand, and are much more likely to tell their friends about that. If they, they ever meet somebody at a cocktail party at a coffee shop who has that problem, they're going to be able to go, here's... You're frustrated because you have this problem. I have a friend who got me out of it. Yep. And it's all in the language that we use. It needs to be crystal clear, especially about those three levels of problems our customers are experiencing. One of the most effective and fun things we've seen you do at our events, and you didn't do it today, but you've done it at our Entree Leadership Master Series, is we've had attendees come up on the stage and we put their website on the screen. And one of the things you do in StoryBrand is walk people through how that website needs to, to look so that it does what you're teaching in the book. So before we let you go, yeah. I want these folks tuning in on Facebook to uh, know about the free website. Yeah. It's, it's a great, you can't forget it. Write it down, be ready to go, and you gotta go check it out. Tell them why they need to go, what it's gonna do for them, yeah. and then what they do with that. If you go to 5minutemarketingmakeover.com, 5minutemarketingmakeover.com, spell it out, or, or use the number five, it doesn't matter, it'll go to the same place. I go through what you need to have on your website, and actually go through a website that we created that we consider perfect. It's a perfect website. If it were a real company, it would be a billion dollar company, but yeah. it's not. Which is great, you've given them a model. It's great, giving you a model. Uh, and I uh, answer all the questions there. But let me just say, if you don't have time to do that or if you don't want to do that, there's three things that your website needs to answer within five questions. There's three, five seconds. Three questions your website needs to answer within five seconds. What do you offer? How will it make my life better? And what do I need to do to buy it? What do you offer? How do I make my life better? And what do I need to do to buy it? If you're not answering those three questions, you're losing money. What do you offer? How will it make my life better? And what do I need to do to buy it? Just answer those three questions and you're gonna be a long way down the road. Incredible stuff, now you know why we love Donald Miller so much. Again, his brand new book, Building a Story Brand. If you don't have it, run, go get it wherever books are sold. Your main website, hit it real quick. Storybrand.com.